Hey guys, I'm Becky from Book Butt Reviews, and welcome to Chapter 4 of the Winter Magical Readathon. Today it is Sunday, December 22nd. It is morning. I'm about to leave for work here pretty soon, but I have enough time to go ahead and start this vlog. I'm actually starting this before finishing Chapter 3's vlog. I'm not going to have a lot of time after work to film, so I wanted to do this now and I'll explain why. Wednesday is Christmas and in my family on Tuesday Christmas Eve we celebrate it with my grandma and my whole extended family. Then that night my husband and I go and stay at my mom's house. We wake up on Christmas morning with her, do Christmas with my family, and then leave and go to his mom's house to do Christmas with them. This year though my mom decided since we are all grown, me and my brother are now moved out of the house, that since we both have significant others where we have other places that we also have to get to on Christmas Day, she's decided to do Christmas early. So Christmas is today with my mom. That means that when I get off work today, which I'm trying to get off as soon as possible, I need to get home, change, and then go to her house for Christmas. I'm so 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 excited, but that means I don't have a lot of time to film because I want to get there as soon as possible. So I decided since I have time, we're gonna film now. So just in case that I don't finish these books today at work, I will be finishing them today regardless. And that is the House of Night book that I'm on, Awakened. This is book seven or eight, I can't remember, but I just have like a hundred pages left, maybe a hundred and fifty. I'm gonna be trying to listen to the audiobook of this at work and finish it. And then for my other chapter three prompt, because I did have two. This one was for read a paranormal or book with a ghost. And then I have Furyborn for read a book with a dedication at the front. Again, I'm right at the end, but last night I was not feeling great. I'm still not feeling the best today. I'm trying to power through it. I think I'm getting a cold. I just have a lot of sinus drainage, which is giving me a sore throat and just a perpetual headache. And it's great but I'm trying to just live my life. So last night I wasn't able to finish them like I planned, but I definitely foresee me getting them done today. So if they're not done today at work, then I will just finish them up in chapter four's vlog, but those will be the first things that I get done. So now let's take chapter four's quiz. Welcome to chapter four. The whole school, including the staff, seemed to be a bit shaken up about the writing on the castle's wall. Some even cared about Mrs. Norris, although a majority were glad of the temporary break from the sneaky little monster. Filch has been haunting the castle looking as lively as Moaning Myrtle. Enemies of the air beware, what does that mean? Most teachers appear to believe this to be a tasteless prank, insisting on not wasting time on such silly rumors and refusing to talk about the legend of the Chamber of Secrets. Cough, cough, McGonagall and Snape. Some students swore they already knew what this is all about, whilst others made plans on when and whom to ask about it. But they all had one thing in common. Everyone was speaking about it. Have you already read a little about the Chamber of Secrets? In chapter one, did you select to join the book club with Hermione? No, I did not join the book club. I should have. I don't think I did, right? Did I join the book club? We're gonna retake chapter three real quick to find out if I did. I don't think I did though. Hmm, there was no book club in chapter three. Was it in chapter two? Oh man. Okay. There's nothing that led me to the book club, so... No, I did not join the book club. I don't think I did. So, the next time Chamber of Secrets is brought up is over History of Magic. Professor Benz does not register at first, but surprisingly agrees to tell the class briefly about the legend, after clarifying that he deals in fact not myths and legends, though. You all know, of course, that Hogwarts was founded over a thousand years ago. The precise date is uncertain, by the four greatest witches and wizards of their age. The four schoolhouses are named after them. Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, and Salazar Slytherin. They built this castle together, far from prying muggle eyes, for it was an age when magic was feared by common people, and witches and wizards suffered much persecution. The story goes that Slytherin had built a hidden chamber in the castle of which the other founders knew nothing. Slytherin, according to the legend, sealed the Chamber of Secrets so that none would be able to open it until his own true heir arrived at the school. The heir alone would be able to unseal the Chamber of Secrets, unleash the horror within, and use it to purge the school of all who were unworthy to study magic. So read a book that starts with the letter S for Slytherin. All right, and I don't know. I have anything that starts with S already on it. 
Oh, I do. Split Second, which I did kind of plan. I also have Strange the Dreamer and Spindlefire. Wow, all three of those do start with an S. So Split Second, Spindlefire, and Strange the Dreamer, all my S books, are all on my 19 and 6, and I already foresee me not finishing my 19 and 6. It's not going to happen, or at least at least one book is not going to happen. So I'm kind of thinking going with Split Second, because that's the book out of the three that I really, really would like to get done. It needs to get done. I need to finish that series, because it's short as well. So I can like kind of promise it'll get done. I don't promise anything. <laughs> Let's be real. It's, it, it could not get done. So we're just going to go with Split Second, because I need to finish. All right. It's the start of Christmas break, which is so funny because it is for me as well. I just have today and tomorrow of work and then I'm done until January 2nd. The Great Hall changes the enchanted ceiling to now occasionally float tiny snowflakes down onto the shoulders of remaining students. A lot of your peers decided to go home for the holiday, but you, Ron and Hermione, are spending it right here at Hogwarts. There are maybe a dozen stunning Christmas trees with little charmed reindeer zooming around the branches. The silver suites of armor spontaneously erupt into a cheerful Christmas song when someone passes them, and the mountaintops outside often blend into the calm white of the sky. With everything going on, it's so nice to have the castle a bit quieter and relax for a couple of days. Not to mention, the food is as amazing as ever, maybe even a tad more delicious as some festive dishes were added to the menu just yesterday. Hey witches and wizards, hope you're enjoying the readathon so far and are having a magical December. Magical giveaway. Ooh! I'd love to treat one of you to a little magical gift. Since it's winter time, at least at Hogwarts, I'd love for you to be cozier and feel a bit extra magical on the daily basis, so I thought it would be a fun idea to host a little giveaway with the prize of an authentic scarf in the colors of your Hogwarts house. This would be purchased from the London Studio Tour Shop. All you need to do to enter is to tweet at Magical Readathon using a hashtag Winter Magical Readathon giveaway and tell us in your tweet which two characters from the whole series you'd like to spend your holidays, whoever they might be, with. The entries are valid until the end of December have a cozy holiday season. I hope you know how magical you are. Love, G. Oh my god, that's so nice! All right, I'm gonna screenshot that so I can do that later. So let's continue. Naturally, after the Chamber of Secrets message has appeared and Mrs. Norris has been petrified, all you three were doing was coming up with the theories on who's responsible. Ron jumps to the conclusion that it's 100% Malfoy and has been acting aghast whenever Hermione brings up a point against his suspicions. During another one of these instances, Hermione puffs her chest and admits that she has come up with a way of finding out if Malfoy truly is the heir of Slytherin or not. Go on then, Ron waves his hands impatiently. She's explaining all about the polyjuice potion, not leaving the part out about how many rules you would break if you go ahead with this plan, but that it would allow you to change your appearance into any Slytherin and infiltrate their common room, hopefully getting Malfoy to boast about being the heir. But you said it would take a month. We cannot wait that long. What if someone else gets attacked? She blushes and mumbles something about having the potion brewing in secret already for a while. It's almost ready to use if we so wish. A bit surprised yet impressed, you mull over the idea. On one hand, it's something you could do tomorrow and that would hopefully give you all some answers. Plus, you've always been curious to see how Malfoy acts around his own friends and about how the Slytherin common room looks. On another hand, you feel like there's so many holes in this plan, you'd be breaking so many rules, and you have a feeling there's another way to go about this. You don't really think that Malfoy is the heir either way. Your friends look at you expectantly. Okay, let's use the Polyjuice Potion, or no, there must be another way. See, I don't know what to pick, because I would never do it. I would never do the Polyjuice Potion. But I know what happens by doing it, so I feel like we should, but I wouldn't, and it's supposed to be what I would do. We're not going to do it. There must be another way. There must be another way you really don't fancy drinking a potion, breaking that many rules, and most of all, turning into Crab and Goyle. What if something goes wrong and you can't turn back? No, there must be something else you can do. And chapter one, did you acquire Tom Riddle's diary? Don't have it. You head back towards your dorm. You need to come up with something else. You all are so deep in thought that you don't notice the whole seventh floor hallway was flooded until you stepped in the water yourselves. Yuck, toilet water. After a quick glance at your friends, you cautiously move towards the bathroom that has caused this. At least it's not Myrtle's, Hermione whispered, is what I think it's supposed to say. You quickly notice what must have caused the toilet to clog. An old leather book has been shoved there with the flush still turned on, which is the diary. So pick up the book or no thank you. Let's go make that potion. No, we pick up the book. Odd. The journal seems to be empty, but is personalized for someone named Tom Marvalo Riddle. Hmm, you feel a bit odd holding this, but it must just be because you didn't get much sleep last night. What with everything going on? So your reading prompt is read a book that has been written by an author whose last name starts with either T, M, or an R. So we have Strange the Dreamer. That is the only one that I have. All right.
Strange the Dreamer. That's a big one and I have two other books that I'm going to be prioritizing over that so this might go into chapter five. Let's keep going. You showed the diary to Hermione previously but after a couple dozen of attempts to reveal hidden text she concluded that the diary is simply empty. That just did not seem right to you. Why would this old diary that looks so worn in be empty? Why is it here at all? As Ron and Hermione were still at the common room working on a defense against the dark arts essay you had a chance to finish earlier, you take it out to have another look. You can feel an odd pull towards the item that you can't quite explain. You turn the diary in your hands a couple of times and without thinking about it too much you grab your quill and start writing. The ink shone brightly on the paper for a second and then as though it was being sucked into the page vanished. Excited Harry loaded up his quill a second time and wrote my name is Harry Potter. The words shone momentarily on the page and they too sank without trace. Then at last something happened. Oozing back out of the page in his very own ink came words Harry had never written. Hello Harry Potter, my name is Tom Riddle. How did you come by my diary? When asked if Tom Riddle knows anything about the Chamber of Secrets, he says yes and offers to show you. You think of all the people that have been attacked. Poor Colin Creevy was now one of them too. Although it is kind of refreshing not having him following you. And you just know you have to see what this Tom Riddle knows, whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. I'm glad the only option is dive into the memory because that's what I would have chose regardless. Okay, to be honest, my throat is killing me. So I think from here on out, I'm just going to give you a synopsis because I'm dying. Okay, so we saw the memory that we see in the book and the movie where we find out that Hagrid gets blamed for, I believe, opening the chamber the first time. We go to find Hagrid and Minister of Magic shows up. So he says if anyone wanted to find out some stuff, all they'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. So we gotta go get those answers. Let's follow the spiders, even though I also hate spiders. Through the Forbidden Forest, past whispering and mumbling shadows, you make your way to Aragog, the father of all spiders. Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? I agree. Tweet a picture of a butterfly with I followed the spiders hashtag. Okay, that's nice. A fun little tweet instead of a reading prompt. Okay, so we followed the spiders to Aragog. We found out that Hagrid did not open the Chamber of Secrets. And now we have completed chapter four. I have a lot of books to try and read, but okay, I'm gonna head off to work. So I will hopefully see you guys later. Hey guys, I am back from my mom's house. I do want to quickly recap what this week's plans are because surprise, surprise, I did not get any reading done today at work. So I wasn't able to physically finish Furyborn. And then I was going to listen to the audiobook of Awakened, but then I realized that I cannot find my earbuds at work. So I think that they're here. I'm just going to have to go look for them. But I do need to finish Awakened. I think I want to focus on this first and get this done. I only have 140 pages left. I need to finish it. Destiny is finishing it like right now and says that it's pretty intense. Whereas Furyborn has just been amazing. I'm definitely expecting it to be five stars. I'm just loving it. I can't wait to read the next one. There's just so much going on. I've really, really enjoyed taking my time and really getting to know this book and understand everything that's happening because it's it's honestly phenomenal. It definitely reminds me of Wicked Saints and I love that book. So I'm very, very excited to have picked this book up. But yes, I will be finishing those two, starting with Awakened. That needs to get done. And then once I finish those, chapter three will be done. So now for chapter four, we are reading Strange the Dreamer for read a book with a author's by an author whose last name starts with a T. This book is 532 pages. I do really enjoy how floppy it is, which is why I've decided to go ahead and use this magnetic bookmark because I am expecting to lose a paper bookmark in this. Then I need to read Destined by PC Cast as part of the next book in the House of Night series. Then I have 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is the book that I am reading for... I don't think I'm reading this for a prompt. I think I'm reading this just for fun. Yes, I am. So I'm very excited to read this. This is the next book that I am picking up once I finish chapter threes. And then I have two other books that are on my Kindle. The first one is Throw Like a Girl. That is for a review. And the other one is Split Second, which is for the prompt to read a book that starts with an S. So yes, those are the very large plans to read all these books this week 
plus two more. It's a lot. It's a lot. Can I do it? Possibly. Now I'm going to head downstairs. I'm going to unpack my gifts from my mom's house. I am going to be doing a Christmas haul. Some of the things that I got today and then what I will get on Tuesday and Wednesday from the rest of my family I will show in my Christmas haul video. But all right, I'm gonna go clean up downstairs and get to reading. Hey guys, I am on my way to my last day of work. I'm so, so excited. Not my last day forever, but la my last day before going on vacation. I'm so excited. Last night, I did finish Awakened. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed the ending. Just like very dramatic and action-packed. So I am excited to start the next one today. I will also be finishing up Furyborn. I did bring it with me to work, so I can hopefully finish it there. And then as soon as that book is done, I'm going to start 10 Blind Dates. I think that that is it. And I'm just going to listen to some music and have a great last day of work before vacation. So I am now officially on vacation until January 2nd. I am so freaking excited about it. Ah, it feels so nice to not have to work anymore. I wish it could go on forever, but we definitely don't have it like that. So I must continue to work. As you would have seen from my little montage, I did go to, well, I show you in the montage that I go to Walgreens and that was to pick up prescriptions because I did leave work and go to urgent care today. I just feel really bad and I didn't want it to get to the point where it was in October where I got an ear infection and everything. Yeah, no thanks. I went today. It took me three hours. Two hours was just waiting. There were a lot, a lot, a lot of sick kids. And plus with tomorrow being Christmas Eve, everybody's trying to take care of everything now. So I totally understand, but it sucked. So I have a upper respiratory infection slash cold. Look at my poor little nose, it's so raw from blowing it all day. But I do have three prescriptions to take. Fun stuff. While in the waiting room, I did read some of Furyborn. So I am on page 417, which means that I have like 70 pages left. So I'm going to finish this up tonight like right now it's getting so free well it's been good the whole time but it's like really good right now and I will say that there is a sex scene in this book that lasts like four pages and this book is like a, a tall book so four of these pages one two three four is a sex scene and it's it's not extremely graphic but it's a lot more graphic than I'm used to in YA like I was very surprised, especially reading that in a waiting room, but it happened and I'm very happy that it happened. I'm hoping to also try and read 50 pages of Destined tonight, which is the next House of Night book that Destiny and I are reading, which I was talking to her and this just makes me like so freaking happy is that she said how much fun she's been having buddy reading and that when we finish the series out, which we are going to also buddy read the spinoff series together, the books that have come out thus far, which is three books, that she would like to buddy read something like every month with me, which is so fun because she is honestly the best buddy read person I've had thus far. I haven't buddy read too many things. It was fun, but it wasn't like super fulfilling. So I'm very, very excited that she's having just as much fun as I am and that I found like this new buddy read partner. It's very exciting. But now I'm going to head downstairs. I'm going to eat something. I'm going to take my medication and I'm going to get reading. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Hey guys, I just wanted to check in one last time for tonight because I finished Furyborn. This was so freaking good. It is definitely going to go on my, well, I don't want to say definitely, but it's probably going to go on my top 10 books of 2019. I absolutely loved it. I'm so happy I gave it its fair shot and tried it out because it was really, really, really 
good. I don't know what it is. It, it reminds me a lot of Wicked Saints. I think because of all the politics, I really, really enjoy that, which is why I really, really enjoyed The Cruel Prince. So I think things that have politics and romance kind of stories, I loved it. And I don't really know how to describe it of what ties all these books together, where I can be like, that's the kind of book I like, because I didn't think I was gonna like this and I loved it. So I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna have to look at other books that are similar to this and Wicked Saints and things like that. I loved it. I loved it so, so, so much. Merry Christmas, everybody. Today it is Christmas morning. My husband and I have just exchanged gifts. We had a very relaxing morning. I do have to get ready here soon because we have to head over to my mother-in-law's house for Christmas. We are doing a breakfast, which I'm very, very excited about, which means we should be able to get home early. Yesterday, I did not update you guys at all. I did not have time before we left for my grandma's house for Christmas Eve but we did have a really great time yesterday. By the time we got home, I was just very, very tired from the day and my cold just like really, really got the best of me. So I did not update, but I did read yesterday. So I did start 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is really, really cute so far. I am halfway through, actually over halfway, on page 170, and I ended where the date is today, so I will be reading Christmas Day in the second half today. I'm really enjoying it. It's just such a fun and cute idea, and I'm just enjoying it. I have an idea of where I think the story is going to go. I think it's pretty obvious, but we will have to see what happens. I will be taking this to my mother-in-law's house because I have a feeling that I'll have some downtime to read while everyone is hanging out. So once I finish that today, I think the next book I'm going to start is throw like a girl or I may start split second and then throw like a girl. I haven't really decided yet but it's between the two of which one I will start. Before I get ready for the day, I do have a bookish box unboxing with the holidays and everything. It's just been a bit crazy so I decided to go ahead and unbox this here in a vlog which I have never done for their regular boxes. I've done it for a one-time box, but never for their monthly box. But I figured let's just throw it in this vlog because I already have enough videos that I need to film and edit this week already. But this is the December bookish box. I am subscribed to them on a monthly basis. I use my own money to buy these every month unless somebody uses my referral code. So when you are subscribed, no matter who you are, so this isn't like I'm a big deal because I'm not, you get a referral code that you can share with friends and when you get three people to sign up you get a free box. So every now and then you awesome people are using my referral code which gets me a free box. This one however is not. So I did pay for this one with my own money and I believe the theme is Ardently Austin, I think. Let me see. Yes, the theme is Ardently Austin, so it's all Jane Austen themed. I'm not a big fan of Jane Austen. I haven't read any of her books. I did try to read Pride and Prejudice because it's my favorite YA retelling. It is my favorite movie to watch, but I just couldn't get into it. I don't like classics. I don't like that old style of writing. I'm just not a fan of it. So no matter what. They said that they the things are themed very loosely around her, so if you are a fan, then you will appreciate it, but if you're not a fan, you will still enjoy everything in the box. So let's find out together, because this is the box that I was kind of questionable about if I wanted to get it, but I decided to go ahead and get it, so here we are. The so first, a look inside the box. We have our beautiful paper snakes. All right, first up, we have a necklace, and it is really, really cool. It is this very, very cool typewriter necklace that definitely, I can see the Jane Austen inspiration, but I also see this as just a very general bookish thing. I do really like this necklace. It is very cute. It is a rather large charm, but I still think that it's something that I'm going to keep for myself. And according to the spoiler card, this is actually a bonus gift. So the typewriter pendant has nothing to do with Jane Austen, which now makes a whole lot of sense because it's the typewriter that's on their box. So they said, we've included this bonus item as a special holiday gift to our subscribers. Thank you for supporting us this year and we can't wait to show you what we've got in store for 2020, which I'm so excited about 2020 and that's such a cool gift. I, I like this a whole lot more now. 
That's so cool. I do know that in 2020 they are starting a monthly bookmark that will be a woodmark, which I'm very, very excited about. It's supposed to be very, very fandom related and it could be bookish fandom or TV or movie fandom. So I'm I'm really curious to see what is going to be on all these woodmarks. Hopefully I can collect them all. Unlike what I did this year, I did miss a couple. Well, I missed, I think one or two, maybe just one. And then I did lose one, which I'm kind of upset about because I really like that one. I think I left it in like a library book. So yay for me. Next, it looks like we have a candle and it says Christmas at Barton College, gingerbread and orange peel. I really, really like this label. I think it's so pretty. I love that it is a matte color and it does say at the bottom that it is by the bookish shop, which they did recently start making their own candles. Ooh, that actually smells really nice. I definitely, because of the gingerbread and possibly some cinnamon has that Christmassy smell, but with the orange, it's like very fresh. I really, really like it. And it does have a wood wick in it, which is also really cool. I've never had a wood wick candle. Moving on with the box, we have a mug. Oh, this is like a very interesting material. It's metal, but it's very, very light. Like this is the lightest mug ever. And it says, I declare after all, there is no enjoyment like reading. And that is from Pride and Prejudice. Okay, so my camera just stopped recording because my memory card is full. I went to quickly transfer everything and it said it's going to take 45 minutes and I need to get ready very, very soon. So I've switched over to using my phone to record. So the quality may be different. I don't know if it's better, worse, what. So we are using the front facing camera. I hope everything works out great. Let's keep going. I feel like it might be better quality and you guys may see just how sick I look. All right, next item is this strange thing that we have here. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what this is, but it's obviously Pride and Prejudice inspired. We do have Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth on here. It's a very strange material and it Velcros, but like, I mean, it's huge. It's obviously not a bracelet. So I definitely have to look at the spoiler card for this. Oh, it's a mug cozy. It's a matching mug cozy, gorgeously illustrated by Bukowski Draws. So let's try it out on our Pride and Prejudice mug. Oh, that's really cool. So it is the perfect size to put around this mug because this is made out of tin or aluminum or something. It's very, like I'm telling you, lightest mug I've ever handled in my life. But because it is so light and completely made out of some kind of metal, it is going to very, very easily get hot on the outside. So you have this really cool cozy that you can put on the outside. And I love that it fits this cup to a T. And this cup is like pretty large. What a really, really cool thing, especially when the cup that you gave us is going to get hot very easily. I like that they rectified that by giving you this super Super cool cozy. I think that's so cool. All right, next item looks like it is the t-shirt. And so far I can see it's in this gorgeous, gorgeous maroon color. I have another shirt in this color and I love it very, very much. It is my Bobaton shirt. Love it. So it says Pemberley and Hartfield and Kelly and Hall and Barton Cottage and Mansfield Park and Northanger Abbey. I think that these are all the places that all of her books take place in. Okay, so the monthly shirt featuring the main estate names from all of Austin's books created by the bookish shop. Next, I have the monthly enamel pin. And on the back, because I'm not looking at the pin just yet, it says that it was designed by Books Breathe Magic. And the spoiler card says that it was inspired by Persuasion. Never read it. Never gonna. Let's see what it looks like together. Oh, that's really cool. It says, you pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. I will say that Austin definitely knows how to write a story with it being just like dramatic AF writing and the whole I'm half agony, half hope. Like that's just so epic. And I love overly dramatic things. Next are the monthly tarot cards. Oh man, are these stunning. First up is the world and we have Mr. Darcy on it. Next is the fool and the spoiler card says that this was inspired by Mary Ann Dashwood who is from Sense and Sensibility. I think that this one is just absolutely gorgeous. I think this is my favorite one of the three because I 
like it's just so stunning. I think the colors on it are beautiful. I just love her silhouette. It's gorgeous. And then last but not least is The Hermit, which is Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. And I will say calling her The Hermit is rude. Okay, rude. So I think that I've decided to use my tarot cards as bookmarks, just like really fun extra bookmarks because I don't know what else to do with them. I don't do tarot or like really believe in tarot cards. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. These are designed by at Dark and Beautiful Art and I every time I get them even if I don't know who the characters are which I do know who these characters are except for Marianne but even if I don't know who they are I think the artwork is like just out of this world. So I do love them. I do want to keep them. And I've decided to use them as bookmarks. And then the last item that would be in this box is the monthly Zodiac bookmark, which is always designed by Gabriella Budoso. This month they were featuring Capricorn and they did Scarlet from Caraval, which, oh my god, I'm so excited to see that. Unfortunately, there was a misprint or some kind of issue with the bookmark, so they did email us to let us know it wouldn't be in the box, but that we will get it in the January box. So, I will have it next month. I'm so, so, so excited to see it because Caraval is one of my favorite series. And they do have a instrumental reading playlist this month, which I really, really enjoy. It's inspired by Jane Austen's works. It's curated by Paperback Bones on Spotify. So they do have a tiny URL as well as the Spotify scan code. So you guys should be able to scan that or type in that URL and you'll be able to listen to that. I do love that it's an instrumental reading playlist. I love listening to music, instrumental music, while reading. So I do have a music to read to playlist that is public here on YouTube. So if you guys want to check it out, just go onto my profile and go to my playlist. I think it's really cool. I will check that one out for sure. And then it does not say it on the card, but next month's theme is, I think it's ink and darkness, ink and snakes. I don't know. I know that one of like the main books that's inspired by is Serpent and Dove. I freaking loved that book so freaking much. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't get their exclusive edition because it did have beautiful artwork on it, but I did go out and buy myself a copy. I participated in the read along with the bookish box. It was a lot of fun, but I'm very excited for next month. I can't wait to see what's going to be on the woodmark. I am so excited about the woodmarks. I will have in the description my referral code that you guys can use to subscribe to the bookish box. I highly suggest it. It is my favorite monthly subscription I've ever been a part of. I just love everything about the bookish box. I'm so 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 happy to give them my money every month. But all right guys that is everything that was in this awesome unboxing. I really enjoyed it even though I'm not a big Jane Austen fan. They were right. I, I still love every item. I think the only thing that I'm a little if he on if I will keep is the pin just because I have no idea what this book is about but I do really like the quote it's just so angsty and extreme and dramatic I love it so I might still keep the pin but now I'm going to get ready for my in-laws Christmas I cannot wait. Hey guys, it is Thursday afternoon. I just got done filming my Christmas haul video, which will be going up tomorrow. Very excited about that. But last night I did finish 10 Blind Dates and this was absolutely fantastic, you guys. I loved this book so freaking much. It was so, so cute. I'm definitely giving it five out of five stars. It made me just feel all of the feels and it was just so cute. I think it was really, really well done. It was pretty obvious on what was gonna happen, but I still loved it regardless. It did kind of like make you think like maybe it's not gonna happen. So it was perfect for the season. I would highly recommend you pick this up during Christmas time. I think if I ever decide to reread it, I will follow the dates and read those chapters then. But for this first time, I really just wanted to read it all right now. So that is what I did and it was honestly just perfect. I did not pick up anything else just yet. I'm thinking that I'm going to go ahead and pick up Split Second. I have it on my Kindle because I've owned it for a very, very long time. So I think that that is the next book I'm going to pick up. And then I will pick up Throw Like a Girl and then Strange the Dreamer. So right now I am just going to run to the bank really quick to deposit some money. And then I need to edit videos and then read and eat some food at some point. Exciting stuff is happening. Hey guys, today it is Friday. It has been 
a day. So currently it is 9.30. I have not updated you guys all day, but last night I did do some reading. I did start split second on my Kindle and I just took a bath and also read some more of it and I'm really really enjoying it. I will say though I feel like I forgot a lot about Pivot Point so I did look up to see if there was somebody who did a summary of it who spoils everything and tells me what happened to refresh my memory and there's a website which I don't know if they are still keeping up to it. I will double check really quick, but it's called the Recaptains. They read books and then post all of the spoileriness on their website so that if you need to read the next book in the series or something and you don't remember what happened, you can go and read their little spiel instead of rereading the book. I love them so much. I totally forgot about them. I didn't know if the book was going to be on there and it was so I will double check right now to see if they are still keeping it up because it is an amazing website that seriously saves my life a lot. So I did read their summary and I was like okay yes now I remember everything and then I started split second right? Yeah split second. So I'm now on I'm not very far into it I'm 20% of the way through I was hoping to be able to finish it today but that's not looking like it's gonna happen. I have four hours left of the book, which isn't a lot at all. I'm hoping to get a very big chunk done today, and I'm on page 75 of 361. So far, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm just so excited to see what's going to happen. I really, really enjoyed the first book, so I can't wait to see how this one is going to play out. Okay, so I just looked up the Recaptains website, which I will also link down below. It's just recaptains.co.uk and they just posted a summary of A Curse of Dark and Lonely on December 26th of 2019, which was yesterday. So yes, they are keeping up to date. They have a lot of books out here. Strange the Dreamer. Check out Recaptains if you have already read a book and you need to read the next book or you need to talk about it or I don't know, whatever purpose you need to know everything that happens in a book, they have it on their website. I love Recaptains. Like I said, I will link them down below so you guys can check them out too. And today I did get a package. I was going to unbox it for you and then I forgot. So let's just go ahead and do like a little haul kind of thing for you. So today I got my bullet journal in. I'm going to start bullet journaling for 2020. So first up I bought a little compass and protractor. So I needed this because I did need a little ruler but then I realized that I do have a full 12 inch ruler on my desk. I forgot but I needed a protractor because I would love to do things with circles at some point in my life and now I can. Then I bought some pencil sharpeners. Yes, a lot. I only needed one but at the dollar store they only had a 12 pack instead of just one regular one. So, and then today from Amazon I bought some metallic gel pens that I'm very excited about. And now the bullet journal. I'm very excited. You guys are the first ones to see it. I can't wait to start it. Here it is. Look at how gorgeous it is. It is so, so pretty. I will leave a link to this bullet journal down below and I just love the design on it. I love the gold foiling. It is the same on the back and then also on the spine it has some really nice detailing. I can't wait. My first ever bullet journal. The pages do seem pretty thick so I'm hoping that there's no bleed through but we'll have to find out together and it also has a ribbon bookmark. So I'm thinking hopefully tonight, if not tomorrow, I will start drawing everything out in pencil. I have all of my plans ready. I've been planning this for a very long time of like what kind of spreads I want to do and yearly versus monthly kind of things that I want to put in here. I'm just very excited. Right now though, I'm going to eat a delicious salad, watch some booktube, just kind of like relax from the crazy day that I've had. It's just, it's been a ridiculous day. And probably start reading at some point. Good morning guys. It is Saturday morning. Legitimately morning. It is 9 52. My little cousin is coming here to get babysat overnight. She is five and she should be here between like 10 30 and 11 but I got up early so I could kind of clean up my house a little bit. Here I am. So I do look like a bum but we're just gonna rock it all day long because I don't see any points getting ready at all today. So last night I did not do any reading. None of it. 
my bullet journal took a lot longer than expected but at the same time a lot sooner like I knew it was gonna take a lot of time I didn't think it was gonna take so much time but I'm also like a little bit of a perfectionist and I like taking my time especially with creative things however I was watching some bullet journal videos in preparation for getting my own so I've been watching like a crap ton especially this last week because I knew that it was gonna be coming this week and a lot of people were like oh I've spent the last two weeks getting all these spreads together and I'm just like oh my god I anticipated this taking like one day to draw everything up one day to film like maybe two days I did not expect weeks I can definitely see how it could take weeks if you just do a little bit here and there whereas I just like went full throttle and did it all last night I mean I only did my 2020 spreads I didn't touch January because I'm gonna be filming that later I haven't touched it yet even though I I do need to do it because you know I would like to use them in 2020 so I do have to write those up but I might go ahead and do those like today maybe tomorrow maybe Monday I don't know I started at like 11 ish sometime between 11 and midnight is when I started I finished at like I think 4 30 a.m. I definitely just kept going because I was really enjoying it it is so freaking fun to have just a creative outlet and to do it I am so excited about it so needless to say I did not read any of split second afterwards I just went to bed because I had to get up today and I still didn't fall asleep until like 5 30 6 o'clock so hooray it's it's gonna be a long day today so I did grab my kindle and bring it down here with me so that I can do some reading I just really want to get through split second so that I can start throw like a girl and then start strange the dreamer and I forgot I also need to read destined which destiny contacted me I don't think yesterday but the day before yeah the day before and said that she's been sick and stuff like everyone's sick what is happening my alarm is going off upstairs let me go turn that off I forgot to <laughs> turn it off but anyways as I was saying we decided not yesterday but day before which was Thursday to start reading 50 pages a day until we're done so I need to catch up I need to read like 100 pages today which is no big deal and then I need to see where that like takes us to in terms of the week just so I know like when it has to be completed by because I fall behind sometimes but I'm hoping today that I can catch up on that and read split second and do everything ah hey guys so I just wanted to check in really quick because my cousin should be here pretty soon because it's now 11 I've been reading split second and it is so freaking good I love this book so much so far it is just as good as the first one I just freaking love it and I wanted to take a second to talk about it because I don't feel like I talk about it enough if you have not checked out pivot point and now split second you freaking should because it's so well done it's by Casey West and she is pretty well known for writing YA contemporary romance and one day she got the brainiac genius idea to write a YA paranormal sci-fi romance kind of book it's totally out of her norm and it's outstanding I don't think I've ever read one of her YA contemporary romances I should because this book is seriously good it's it's ridiculously good it makes no sense for somebody who doesn't normally write this to be this good at it so I can only imagine what her YA contemporary romance is like I think I need to change that in my life to actually read one of hers because I honestly don't think I've read any it's just so freaking good I, I can't get over that she is not well known for this type of book because she does it so freaking well so well but all right I'm gonna get back to reading before my cousin gets here and I'll update you guys again later hey guys today it is Sunday I did not come back on and update you guys yesterday after my little cousin got here just because it became just a very hectic day she was a really good kid but just all over the place all of the time so I did not come back on and update you again however reading did get done so since today is Sunday I am gonna go ahead and wrap up this week's vlog right now so let's go ahead and talk about everything because after this I have two vlogs to start 
at the same time. But starting at the beginning of this week, I did read Awakened. I really, really enjoyed this. I can't remember what I said I was going to give it. I think I said I was going to give it five stars. Okay, yes, I did give it five stars. From what I am remembering, I'm pretty sure that I really, really enjoyed this one. I think the ending was really nicely done, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember like what happened in this one versus what is happening currently in Destined. So I'm pretty sure the way that this ends was kind of like a big deal. Like I feel like we have just like a lot of stuff. Okay yes <laughs> I just read the last page of this one and yes this book was like crazy. The ending was a very big deal for a lot of the characters and definitely a five star book for the House of Night series. They have just been getting better and better since book six. Then I finished up Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This book is getting five out of five stars. I'm definitely going to be trying to fit it in my top 10 of 2019 because I love this book so much. And again, it's just so funny because I didn't think I was going to like it. I thought I was DNFing this book. I went in with the expectation that I was going to DNF this and instead it was outstanding. I'm definitely going to be reading the trilogy for sure. I don't know when, maybe, I don't know. I won't tell you maybe January because who knows, but maybe. Which those two were for chapter three's prompts. We're on to chapter four's prompts. The next book I read is 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This was not for a prompt at all, but I absolutely loved it. It was perfect for the season. It was so really well done. I just loved the writing style. I loved everything about it. It was super cute, super fun. I love that it happens during Christmas time and it was fantastic. Five out of five stars. Then as you guys know, I picked up Split Second on my Kindle and I did finish it yesterday. I finished it at like 6 p.m. I believe. So I still had a very big chunk of the day left. I absolutely loved it. It was so, so good. Five out of five stars for sure. This was a giant five out of five star week for me. I loved every second of every book that I have read this week, which was the best way to end the last full week of December and also the best possible way to spend my vacation from work. It has just been fantastic and this book did not disappoint. It was so well done. It was the last book in the Pivot Point duology and it was just the best way to end it. I found the entire book from start to finish to be outstanding. I already have plans to check out some of her contemporary romance because if she writes paranormal romance this well and it's not what she's known for, I can only imagine what her contemporary romance is like. And I did look, I do own two of them on my Kindle. So I will definitely be checking out one of those very, very soon because I love her writing style so much and the romance in this book was just top notch with it being a like side factor so I can't wait to read a contemporary romance by her where that is the main focal point. It's gonna be so good. And then since I finished Split Second at like six o'clock I did go ahead and just jump into my next read and that is Throw Like a Girl by Sarah Henning. Now I did forget that this book is supposed to be for a vlog and review. I did receive this from a blog tour company, the advanced reader copy, so that I could read it. I am now more than halfway through the book because I stayed up till two reading it. It's really good so far. I will give you a little sneak peek into that but I'm 65% of the way through. I only have like two hours of reading left in this book and I woke up this morning and was like oh my god I'm supposed to be vlogging my experience with this book and I have not been at all. So I need to do that today on top of starting my vlog for chapter five. Those were all of the books that I read this week. All of them were five out of five stars. I do have high hopes for Throw Like a Girl. So far it's really good. That's all I'll say. You'll have to check out my vlog and review for all of my real thoughts about it. All right guys that is everything that I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you loved it and you want to see more bookish content from me please hit subscribe and if you want to be notified as soon as as my videos go live here on YouTube, hit the notification bell. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!